Okay, are y'all ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Woo, woo. Okay. Oh, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. That's right. Uh, tonight we're going to read through a couple stories because there's a, a couple of short ones right in a row. And they're about the birth of John the Baptizer and the Messiah, Jesus. And so we'll talk about those things. Before we get to talking about those things, I wanted to talk to you guys about being ready to see God. Uh, can you see God right now? Yeah. No. In fact, the Bible says that no one has seen God's face. Okay, so nobody has seen the presence of Jehovah. Like the actual physical, or it's not physical, the spiritual presence of Jehovah. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen the Father. No man has seen the Father, it says. right? So nobody has seen the presence of, of the Father. Have people seen Jesus? Lots of people saw Jesus, right? Jesus came, and he became God and man, and everybody got to see him. Have people seen the Holy Spirit? Stevie? Yes. Yeah. At the very least, we could say we've seen what the Spirit does. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, the Bible talks about manifestations of the Spirit. What is, what is, when something is manifest, what does that mean? Stevie? Like that it takes a form? When, yeah, when you can see it. Right? So we've seen the manifestations of the Spirit. And lots of times throughout the Old Testament where God does something, where we find out that it's the Spirit who's doing these things. Like in the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, uh, over the most holy place, this is the Spirit that is there. But we've never seen the Father. We need to be ready to see Jehovah God. Father, Son, Spirit. We need to be ready to see God when? Anytime. Anytime. Jaden, is it related to what we're talking about? Yes, sir. But did God show up to uh, the apostles when Jesus... Uh, we heard, they heard a voice. They heard, When he was baptized, they heard a voice. This is my beloved son in whom no, I'm more no, pleased. No, I mean like when he went up into heaven, there no. were angels. He said, men of Galilee, why do you stand there? Well, in the uh, Bible, it shows Jesus being in the sky in three cases. One of God and one of Abraham and one of Moses. Oh, that's the, the Mount of Transfiguration. And we didn't see God on the mountain when they went up. Jesus was changed, and they saw... Elijah, and Moses, and Jesus. Those are the three people. Okay? The prophets, Elijah. The law, Moses. That's to represent Jesus. Uh, okay, so, we need to be ready to meet God when? Anytime. Anytime. Which means, you always need to have your life set in order. There should never be a time when you aren't ready to meet God. Is God going to tell us before he returns? No. No. Is God going to give a warning before he decides to end the universe? No. No. Do you get a phone call telling you ten minutes ahead of time when you're going to die? Are you going to die? No. Some bad things happen to people all the time. People don't wake up thinking that they're going to die today. They wake up, they brush their teeth, they comb their hair, they get dressed, and they go out. And today is their last day on earth. You have to be ready to meet God every day. Which means you should always be living faithfully every day. You won't be perfect. Try to be, but you won't be. So live faithfully every day. Your love for God should drive you into doing everything you can. Into doing everything in a way that will make God happy, that will make God proud. Every day you need to do that, because you don't know when everything is going to come to an end, or when it's our time to stop living here and to go home. Okay? Be ready, always. Let's uh, read in our Bible about two new lives that are beginning. Okay, who are we going to be reading about? 
Kaya, Ania? Um, Tell me one. John. John. Who's the other one? Uh, You're right. Joshua, Joshua or Jesus. Yeah, because Jesus' his name in Hebrew is Joshua. Joshua, right? Okay, so for many months, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, could not talk at all. Remember, Gabriel came and said, you're going to have a son. And jo uh, Zechariah said, how can that be? And the angel said, God will do it. Now you can't talk. Right? So Zechariah can't talk. Now, when Elizabeth's baby is born, the people in her family said that he should be named Zechariah, Zechariah after his father. But Elizabeth told them, no, his name is John. And his relatives couldn't believe it. So no one in the family had ever been named John. So they came to Zechariah and they said, Zech, what should we name the baby? And Zechariah said, no, he wrote. Right, he said nothing. Right? It was a trick question. He wrote down what? His name is John. His name is John. And as soon as he wrote that out, what happened? He could talk. He could talk again. So for nine months, roughly, about 40 weeks, Zechariah couldn't talk. The baby is born. He names the baby John, just like Gabriel said. And all of a sudden, he, talks. he can talk again. Right? So Gabriel, an angel... The Greek word for angel is angelos, which means messenger. So when Gabriel came, when Gabriel came and said, "John, you're going to have a son," or Zechariah, you're going to have a son. His name is John. Whose message was that? God's. Zayn, I couldn't hear you. Stevie. God's. It was God's message. So when Gabriel said to Zechariah, "Because you didn't believe, you don't get to talk," whose message was that? Zayn. God's message. Right? So everything happened the way that God said it would. All of a sudden, Zechariah could speak again. He praised God. And now everyone knew that his son John was special. They knew the Lord was with him. Now let's talk about Jesus. It's about the baby Jesus. These are some of the girls' favorite stories. Right? We like baby Moses. We like baby John. And we like baby... Jesus. Yeah, those are your favorite stories. <coughs> I guess because they all have babies, babies in them. Dad, what does Jesus mean? I know it means Joshua, but what does Joshua mean? Uh, if I remember right, it means the Lord is salvation. I'll have to look it up, but I think I think that's what it means. They have a word for that? Little dog. Or is that... It's the meaning of the name. Or is that, like, but how do names get meanings? Like, are they old words? Sometimes they just put words together, and sometimes a name is derived from another word that has a meaning. Like Stephen comes from Stephanos, which means crowned one or victorious one. Right? So it was almost time for Mary's baby to be born, but he would not be born in Nazareth. Yeah. He was going to be born somewhere else. Because Micah said what? Where did Micah say the, the Messiah would be born, Jaden? Bethlehem. Bethlehem of? Ephrathah. right. So Joseph, at the time, when Mary was about to have the baby, lived where? Stevie? Nazareth. Nazareth. So it looked like Jesus was going to be born where? In Nazareth, which means that Jesus couldn't have been the promised one, Micah. Right. So it looks like, oh, he's going to be born there. But then a Roman emperor orders a count, a count, a census of the people, or a census. Yeah. Oh, you read the book? Yeah, he ordered this accounting, a census of the people. And everybody had to go to their hometown. Their hometown or their Stephen? Birthplace. The, their, their father, yeah, the, their birthplace, to be registered. So Joseph is from Bethlehem. His family is from there. So he takes Mary, he takes Mary, his wife, to Bethlehem. And while they are there to be counted, what happens? Zane? Jesus is born. Uh, fulfilling the words of? Stevie? Micah the prophet, under the inspiration of God. Micah the prophet, who delivered God's message. Right? What did you say, Mom? Uh, Israel was part of the Roman Empire. 
the Roman leader was the emperor Caesar Augustus. Right. He wanted all the people in the empire to pay taxes to Rome. But first, everyone had to go to their own hometown to be counted. Mary's husband Joseph had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. Bethlehem had been King David's home, and Joseph was from David's family. It was a long journey. After three days, Joseph and Mary came to the city of David, but there was nowhere for them to stay. Was Bethlehem a big town? No, it was not. It was a small town. And now, all of a sudden, you've got all these people coming to Bethlehem to be registered. Is, the t is Bethlehem going to be able to handle all of these people, Steve? Negatory. That's right. So, what are we going to do? Well, let's see what happens. It was a long journey. Uh, there was nowhere for them to stay, but a kindly innkeeper, this says, allowed them to stay in his barn. Right? That's how you see the story told a lot, and it shows Jesus, uh, Joseph and Mary in a barn, and then Jesus will be in a manger. The problem is, most of the time, shepherds kept their animals where? In caves. In caves. We think, we think that Jesus may have been born in a cave. We don't know, for, for sure. He was born wherever the animals are kept. How do we know he was born wherever the animals are kept? Stevie? How do we know? What is, he's put in a manger. He's put in a manger, which is what? A feed trough. A feed trough for the animals. I always thought it was on the So, in this, in this manger, there he is. Baby. Right? Jesus is born. And Mary laid him in the manger, and she wrapped him in swaddling, swaddling cloth. Now, this this is a cute little happy manger, isn't it? Do you, do you see the baby? Ooh, do you think farmers and ranchers and shepherds built cute little happy mangers for their animals? No. No. No, sometimes it was just a wooden box, and even cheaper than that was just stone. They would be like a, a wallowed out stone, and they would just throw the food in that. And so Jesus was probably born in a place where the animals lived, and then laid on a rock. Yeah, so is this, is this a very good way to treat the creator of the universe? Yeah. Oh, no. no! You should be no. born in a fabulous place. Yeah. Right. Raise your hand to speak to that. Right. Jesus is Jesus Daddy, getting the kind of treatment that he deserves? No. 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 He's, He's not from the very beginning. On this night, there were shepherds watching their sheep in the fields of Bethlehem. An angel came down to them from the Lord, and the brightness of the Lord's glory shined all around them. The shepherds fell to their knees, and they. They, they put their hands over their eyes. They were so afraid. The funny thing is, there's nothing that would have been good enough. That's right. So that was just fine. It was just as good as anything else. <laughs> the angel said, don't be afraid. I have good news for you, which will make everyone happy. This day is born in the city of David a Savior for you. He is Christ the Lord. The Messiah, the anointed one. He is the one that Micah told everybody about. You will know who he is because you will find him lying on in a manger, wrapped in swaddling cloths. So basically, it would be like somebody showing up today and saying, Hey, go into town, there's a baby lying in a feed trough wrapped up in cloth. Which ranch? Is, is that what people do with babies? No. No. So this was not normal. <laughs> and when they went into town... If they found a baby lying in a feed trough, wrapped up with cloth, just like the angel said, this is not normal. <laughs> when people have babies, do they put them in, in the place where the animals stay? No. No. Do they, do they put them in the place where the animals stay, in the trough where the food goes? No. No. So this was weird. They put them in hospital. So, uh, suddenly many other angels oh. appeared and they, all set, uh, they were all singing praises to God. Praise God in heaven, peace on earth to everyone with whom God is pleased. So the angels told the shepherds to go into town and find the baby. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem, and there they found Jesus lying on a bed of hay in a manger. And they told Mary and Joseph what the angel had said about their son. Mary thought about these things, and she wondered what they meant. 
And she he, she treasured them in her heart. Oh, it's the baby. Oh, it's the baby. Oh, he gave him a hug. The baby kiss. A kiss. Oh. Aww. Where's your baby? Where's your baby? Oh, in the belly. Is it baby puppy? No, the baby's over here. Here's the baby. Here's the baby. She's, she's, hey, that's the baby. Uh, the shepherds went back to their sheep, and they told everybody about what happened. They said they were so glad, and they praised God for what had happened. Now, normally, wouldn't you think that if all this amazing stuff happened, that there, are you looking in your belly? There's, there's not a baby in there. Maybe one day, but the baby is over here. Yeah, in, mom, in, in mommy's belly. In mommy's belly. Wouldn't you think that people would remember? Put your shirt down. Put your shirt down. There's no baby in there. Uh, no, over there. Over there. Over there. Wouldn't you think? Listen. Wouldn't you think that everybody would remember this? Yes. Wouldn't you think that everybody would remember the name of the family? And of the baby who was supposed to be the special one? Yes. Stop. Yes. You would think so. But you know what? Throughout time, people have forgotten the names of all sorts of important things. Can you tell me what happened? What was going on in the news 30 years ago? No. No. Can you tell me who was president 30 years ago? Yes. Yes. But that's only because I've memorized them. Um, like, Close. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, that would be right. Good guess. <laughs> right? And, but, but, we have something today that people didn't have back then. We have things like television that put people's faces in front of you all the time. How many people saw baby Jesus' face that day? Not very many. Joseph and Mary and any of the shepherds came. But the wise men drink. No, the wise men come later. Years later. Yeah. A while later, yeah. Like two years? We don't know exactly. They didn't tell us what date. So, wait, they started following the... But too, too, too technical. All right, we're, we're for the little people. So what we are seeing is that this great news came, but in such a short time, only 30 years later, when Jesus starts to teach and preach, people have already forgotten. And the, the information that people knew for sure the day that Jesus was born, 30 years ago, people wondered. And when Jesus taught and when Jesus preached and they saw the signs and the wonders he was performing, they said, could this be the prophet? Could this be the Messiah? Because we're forgetful and we're always for we forget things. Thankfully, God loves us and God reminds us. Right? Are there any questions about the stories? Right. Yes, Greg. Yes, we're going to do circle prayer. All right, let me have that. Thank you. Okay, circle prayer. Greg really likes circle prayer. Sorry, it's getting that off the floor for me. All right. Okay, stand up. We're going to speak kindly. All right, let's, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you so much for teaching us all the things about uh, the birth of Jesus and John and the amazing things that surrounded those two, two births. We're so thankful uh, for all of the people who were faithful to you throughout time. We're thankful for Jesus who was willing here to come and to be made, uh, to take on a body like ours, to... Show us how to glorify you in everything we do. We are so grateful for all the wonderful blessings you give to us. We do not deserve your love or your grace or your mercy, but we are so thankful for all of them. We love you so much. Amen. Careful, Gregory.